On August 3, 1492, Christopher Columbus, an Italian-born explorer, under the funding of the Spanish crown, set sail from Palo, Spain, to the New World. King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain granted Columbus three ships for his travels, the infamous Santa Maria, Pinta, and Nina. Columbus's goal for his expeditions was to find a new route to Asia in hopes of discovering the fabled gold and spice-laden continent. On October 12th, Columbus landed on a small island which was called Guanahani by the Lucay and indigenous peoples, native to the land. Columbus dubbed it San Salvador. He took possession of the island for Spain and set sail south, eventually sighting Cuba on October 27th. In his journals, he writes about his failed attempts to discover substantial amounts of gold in the islands. Setting sail further south, he landed in Hispaniola. Christopher Columbus went on three more expeditions before his death in 1506. Of Thursday, October 13th, Christopher Columbus saw the naked indigenous people on the shores of the land. Columbus, along with Martin Alonso Pinzon and his brother Vincent Yanez, captain of the Nina, went ashore with armed men, each captain holding a banner with a green cross with the letters F and Y surmounted by a crown at each end of the cross. It was evident that Columbus was taken aback at the beauty of the land. Columbus described the site as everything is green and a delight to the eye. The land was untouched, fertile with trees full of fruits and air filled with free, sweet fragrances. Columbus, throughout his journal, described himself as dumbfounded by the sight of so much beauty, and I find myself unable to describe it inadequately. Upon landing on shore, Columbus declared he was taking possession of this island for their lord and lady, the king and queen and called for his men to bear witness. The indigenous people gathered around Columbus and his crew. The indigenous people were so eager to see Columbus, he believed they thought he was from heaven. They th would throw themselves on the ground and raise their hands in the air, thanking God for bringing Columbus. Columbus's journal shows us that Columbus thought the native people of the land were very gentle. He described them as very simple and finely made. The eagerness and willingness of the people definitely made Columbus feel superior, as well as the nakedness of the people. Columbus described the indigenous people as so delighted and so eager to please us that we could not believe it. In return for the islander gifts, Columbus's crew gave them glass beads and red bonnets. Eventually, they realized the indigenous people would take anything in return, so they traded them broken pottery and broken glass for all the all the indigenous peoples had. Within the first day of meeting the islanders, Columbus said he could see that they were people who would be more easily converted to our holy faith by love than by coercion. Columbus believed they did not have a religion, and they were ready to be Christian. At the end of his voyage, Columbus brings back six indigenous people to teach them Spanish. It seemed the indigenous people were wooed with Columbus's gifts of kindness. The indigenous continued to trade with Columbus and the crew because they thought this was the opportunity to create a relationship, considering gifts are a way to show kindness. Columbus shows he did not think very highly of the indigenous people. He thought they seemed to appear poor going about their day, as naked as the day they were born. The people carried no weapons and Columbus thought this was ignorant of them. He described them as cowardly and timid. Columbus thought the men were handsome and well built. They were of good stature, dignified, and well-formed. Columbus thought they'd make good servants because they repeated everything they said back to them. Columbus, throughout the voyage, captured some indigenous people to help him with navigation, some trying to escape all the while, and he did not trust them because of this. Columbus's quest for gold was not very successful. He found a few rivers which contained rocks with gold speckles, which he decided to bring back to his maj majesties. It was not until the very end of his voyage when he met King Guacangari, who had two other kings bring Columbus a plaque of gold each. Columbus thought the land was beautiful, only getting better the further he went. The people were gentle and kind. He believed the people to be naive as well, and they would be make great servants. He believed he could convert them to Christianity because they had no religion he knew of. Christopher Columbus, in his journal, shows he did not think very highly of the indigenous people and writes to his king of how they could easily convert and build a city. 
Towards the end of the first voyage of Christopher Columbus, Columbus lost one of the three ships, Santa Maria, and was forced to return to Spain while leaving the 39 men behind in La Navidad in the hope to establish a civilization and put the natives under their control. In Christopher Columbus' journal, he described the natives as being a population that are naked and without arms and are very cowardly, just like the natives that he had described from previous journey. He seemed to have always seen themselves as more superior than the natives. Before leaving the 39 men behind in La Navidad, Christopher Columbus made connections with the local chief to allow them to build a village in La Navidad. By using the wood resources from the wrecked ship, they built a shelter for the men. During Christopher Columbus' second voyage, he once again came back to La Navida with the hope that his men had dominated the natives. However, it did not go as he expected. On November 27, 1493, he landed on La Navida, seeing dead bodies of some of his men, and only to find that all the 39 men had died. The reason behind the men's death still remains as a mystery, one of the many explanations being that his men had raped local native women that angered the locals and killed all the men. Another explanation says that conflict existed between his man and the locals, as they were unwilling to be dominated by the sudden intruders. Although the explanation about the death was unclear, it is said that Christopher Columbus and his crew had later slaughtered the locals and taken them as slaves. The significance of this part of the story is that before the interactions of the locals and Columbus men, the natives had always been described as being innocent, peaceful, or even naive. The locals in La Navidad made an exception and gave a whole different image to the colonists. From the time of landing in 1492, Christopher Columbus never really knew that he discovered a new continent. To the extent of his understanding, he had arrived on an island in the West Indies close to what is now Japan, Sipango in Columbus texts. I will discover a shortcut to India and bring back some of the great wealth I find there. And I can do it, for I know the world is round. And instead of going east to India, I shall sail west and reach India around the other way. It will be a shorter and cheaper way, for I'll do it all by sea. Columbus created his descriptions of the New World not from his own imagination, but from imagery he borrowed from the Travels of Marco Polo and other early adventure journals such as John Mandeville's The Travels of Sir John Mandeville and Otterick of Pardinal's Voyages. Columbus's descriptions of the New World resembled the depictions of the Far East often roaming into the realm of fantasy. Evidence to support the idea that Columbus was convinced he was in the West Indies include his naming of the natives as Indians, his search for fantastic treasures from the Far East, and his wrong travel calculations. Columbus had the idea that the great Khan, Emperor of China, an Oriental people, they didn't want to accept Christianity as a superior religion. This made religious conquest and evangelization two of the main objectives that the Spanish crown had for this voyage. At the same time, Columbus started thinking of himself as the bearer of Christ's non-religious Indios. This can be seen in the cryptic signature that appears in his journals and letters, Christophorans, Latin for the bearer of Christ. According to Bulgarian French philosopher Svetin Todorov, Christopher Columbus's alleged discovery of America marked a profound moment in the identity of the European self. Although Todorov's analysis is centered around the European perspective, it's a good place to situate the context of Columbus. Todorov offers a different rhetoric to the constricting colonial subject and colonial power discourse. Todorov even points out the uselessness in such a narrative as it erases the nuances in history which are critical to understanding it. He claims that the discovery of America was an attempt by the European self to destroy the other, a means for Europeans to identify themselves as modern and natural, while the Americas were unmodern and unnatural. This analysis gives us a much more complex understanding of history, which aids us as we address the many issues in Columbus's actions and voyages. This leads us into the next issue, which is discerning meanings at the time of Columbus versus the present, and what we know now and not what we knew then of Columbus. The most important element of this narrative is to understand that it has been created by historians and not Columbus himself. The year 1492 has only gained importance since the death of Christopher Columbus. Columbus did not know he was discovering the Americas. He went to his grave believing he had charted a new path to the West Indies. 
The question must then be asked, what are the consequences of this narrative? This particular act of reading into the past from the present implies that the unraveling of history and Columbus's actions were inevitable. That is false. We must always take into account that there is no reason why history should have unraveled the way it did. History is an entirely constructed concept in which people from the future give meaning to the past. And, whatever that meaning is, is not always what the original meaning was.